Hey everyone, in response to my last video, more than a few of you asked me to go ahead and show exactly what I had done to motorize this old 2015 official LEGO tram little light rail thing. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I will take it to the studio and I will open it up and show you what it looks like inside and talk about exactly what I did. But I do need to note in advance that uh, this has probably been done a lot by a lot of people. I'm, I'm certain of it. I haven't looked them up, but it, I'm sure it's, it's a common thing to do because a lot of people liked the look of this and it's actually pretty easy to do with just the official LEGO power functions. So if you want an optimal solution to actually follow for how to do this, I recommend that you look around a bit. See what some other folks have done with this thing. Because I did my little conversion very quickly. It's probably not optimized. It was easy, but you can probably do better than this. So I'll show you what I've done, but if you want to do it yourself, be sure to see what other people have done as well. Okay, so let's get into this. First of all, major components needed. I am using the Power Functions 1 uh, series of stuff that's available as of the time of the recording of this video. If you're watching this video in the middle of 2018 or later, then Power Functions 2 will be available, and I just can't predict the future. I don't know what that stuff will be like, but I'm using the most common stuff, so the most recent updated version of the Power Functions uh, train motor base, which is compatible with the first revision of that as well. The infrared controller, which also has it's the, the infrared receiver and speed controller, and then just a AAA battery, ba battery box or the rechargeable one. They have the same size and shape. I'm using the rechargeable one just because I have a bunch of those and they're great. They're nice and lightweight and they last a long time give you a little extra power. You don't need that extra power though, but uh, the lightweight is, is a good thing. So those are the major components. And just to start things out, the motor has been placed at the front and it starts like this by putting the controller directly on top of that. And then of course, you know, you have to have the axles and the standard train wheels, but this is the core of the system, the electronic system here. And then I just run one wire on one side and then the other wire just comes back so one of them gets connected to one of the channels and that gives you power right there as soon as you hook it up to a battery so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish kind of outlining how this is set up presently just basically does that so the battery is in the center car in this case so this is where everything is that's how I've set up the battery it's just standing on one end with its top facing towards the front so let's look at how that actually works in practice as I open this up there you can see the motor in place I'll just take these tiles out there you go very very clear um, the by default the front and back cars the main cars are built the same they're identical so that lets me show you kind of a before and after although i did make one modification to this one i actually raised up the uh, the seats just to be a little bit more even from front to back by default these slopes are not there so the seats are just one one uh, brick lower to the ground but if i take off these tiles now just to make it even you can see that I took a lot of stuff out. So those wheels and axles have to go. The little white that's on there is just from a, a dry lubricant that I use to keep them from, from, sque from squeaking too much. So don't worry about that. But all the, the tan pieces, the orange pieces un under there, all that stuff had to go in addition to one of these thick door frames up at the front. So here I've actually used the infrared controller as part of the structure to hold up the ceiling. So I'm using these two studs here on either side. Just put a couple of one by two by two bricks on top. You do one by two by one, just a couple of them, just stack it up just to 
bring things back up to the same height as what was there before. I, I, I really tried to do this just as quickly as possible using as few special techniques as, as, as little problem solving really as was required. So I took out everything that I needed to until I was able to place basically these brackets at the same height as they were originally and they're not even attached with any studs in in this case now you can you can change that you can fix that but uh, they are not attached to any plates beneath they're just hooked on to the ends uh, where you have these clips that are able to hold on to pieces so it's basically just slipped down in there and there's actually a pretty good connection that's made when you do that especially when you have other weight on top if i take this off it helps even more because I did take the seat out that was in this space previously. But it's just a lot of little stuff. You know, the little details are, are, are things that you can change around, you can customize, you can try different stuff for the little details, including just creating a simple raised platform to still be able to put figures in that main car. But uh, I already showed you how the, the wires ultimately just get, get run back one from the top just comes back to the motor just loops in and then one goes on out they just move off to the sides so there's there's really no worry about clearance there you know you get these down pretty flat and then they're not taking up much space one wire goes out to the battery car which is this one and this did require a little bit more modification to get it to work because the battery by default would not fit in this orientation within the size of the original center car there which is just floating there are no wheels on the top on the bottom of that so i actually lengthened this by two studs and that just came from adding an extra two stud wide plate in the center there just widened the whole thing out as viewed from here and then to keep there from being too much space between the cars and also to help with the the structure rather than using the old two by two let me break this off at the at the opposite end to show you for the uh, for the ball end pieces rather than using the old light gray two by two bases i've used the newer you know mixel style joints that just have a one by two plate in there so it doesn't go very deep and it allows you to have much better use of space so rather than coming into here and coming under here which would have kind of gotten in the way this just allows things to be a lot closer together and then there you can see how the battery is arranged and i just have the connection at the base i'm able to run a little bit of wire in that space in between that extra space that i created and i just had to had to uh, widen the top as well widen the or lengthen rather the the ceiling if you will which is just regular pieces and ultimately that just left me with gaps on either side so previously this stud worth of width was not there and then this stud worth of width was not there so i just put these hinged simple plates and, and tiles on there which are able to come down not to vertical on the sides there because the the battery box is actually in the way these can go vertical but it looks bad if you go all the way so uh, I would recommend putting some stoppers on the back, just on the on the end here. Just lengthen that out so that this won't go in all the way. Right now, I just have to push it to where it looks roughly even, but I can easily do that, and it doesn't look as good because you end up with that gap there. But that's really it. Anything else is just a matter of small details. Uh, it is a little bit tricky to get this turned on because the main power button is on the the battery there so there are two things you can do to access that one use a long tile or uh, a plate piece you know just open it up and then just push right there you can actually get a little bit of leverage off the side here off and yeah, i think that's back on i'm just toggling it back and forth or you could open it up from the other side pull this up because of how low i have this right now you would actually need to remove this bracket but the whole battery can now slide out that gives you better access to it and that's also what you would need to do 
when it's time to change your battery or to recharge it. One last little detail here that was important was allowing the, the main power wire to get from the battery to the front car. So I just left out a couple of these plates, the one by two black plates there that were used for spacing to create the studs on the side construction for these gray curved pieces. See, I just left a couple of those out. There, this whole structure was there before and I just pulled it apart, took out two plates and then put everything back together the way it was. And that just left that little slot to allow the battery to go through. So really all of the power and all of the function of this power functions conversion is all just within the front two cars. And you don't need to have all the, the seating here if, if you don't want to, to do that extra work. I just figured there's enough space, so why not use it? Uh, I'm not sure if there's any way to get them to be lower. You might be able to reconfigure the positions of the seats a little bit, possibly use some some jumpering to create some half stud offsets to allow that to that whole platform to be a little bit lower. But the major problem here is that you have this pivot, which is always there on the motor and that sticks up quite a bit, kind of gets in the way. And there isn't a, uh, an easy, simple solution to bypass that. If you use a Technic plate that has a, that has a, a row of holes in it, it's not able to go into a place that is compatible with building off to the ends because in order to get it to be flat it needs to go all the way down uh, a technic plate needs to go all the way down and as far as as far down as it will go then it will be at a compatible level with this end here or this spot here where you can ultimately attach things across but then you need to do something with the wire because the wire doesn't have enough space to clear underneath a Technic plate at that point. So, you know, think about it yourself. If you actually do this conversion, uh, consider making modifications. And like I said, definitely check out what other people have done. Uh, some other folks have probably even figured out all of these, these issues and made it simple or maybe made it more complex and better looking, you know, uh, just, uh, yeah, get get different opinions, consider different ways of, of doing it. But ultimately, I end up here with something that looks from the outside like the original. Uh, because I used black tiles here, it's tough to even notice that the center car is longer. Also, by using the shorter ball end pieces that stick out, I believe it's a half a stud less. So that's half stud there, half stud there. So one stud of total gap or one width of a brick of gap between these two is removed. So I add two in this car and then remove one in total from the gap. So the whole thing is one stud longer than original, which is very difficult to see, especially with the the black tiles there. Just all kind of just all kind of blends. It isn't really that noticeable. And by keeping everything nice and low the original height thanks to these tiles. I did have to, well, I didn't have to, but I did put this one plate in here just to give it a little extra support there. It was just an easy way to do that. Since I don't have these brackets, I don't have any of this, any of this platform under here. All that center section was removed. Now because it's low and because of those tiles, it looks fairly stealthy. You know, you just see the wheels sticking out that are just a little bit larger than the originals, but it's not too obvious. The center car never had seats, so that's really not a major loss. You know, it was a place to put a bicycle or two, but it's not a major loss to to not have that, that space occupiable. And the sides of the battery box are the dark gray. Whether you use the recyclable, or excuse me, the rechargeable kind, and I just need to put my hand in front of the camera here and reattach these. There we go. Rechargeable or not, the dark gray on the side means that it just kind of looks extra tinted. Whereas if I had arranged that with this facing towards us, wh whichever way I go, I mean, here you get the dark gray, but on one of the sides you wouldn't. So, you know, putting that in there may have allowed me to keep the original length, 
but then there would be wires and there'd be other things that would be visible from one side. So I think this is a good orientation for that battery, even if my solution for dealing with the gap is not ideal. But again, from a distance, practically don't see it. And the thing runs, it's infrared controlled. So you can run it at any speed from a distance. Now the infrared receiver is kind of buried up in there, but as long as you're not trying to control it from directly above, you know, as long as your controller is within a reasonable arc of, of the side of the train, I didn't have any problem getting it to actually work and, and receive signals because the signals can bounce off pieces inside and then come around. I think there's also a little bit of trans, uh, transparent area in here where the signal can get through. But that's another thing that you could consider doing better than I did. You know, placing the controller somewhere that it would be easier to, to get a signal to it. The receiver section is just up here within this little dome area. So if perhaps you could figure out a way to get that to stick out somewhere, then you'd be able to control this from absolutely anywhere and from any angle, you know, if it's protruding through the roof. May require removing some of these uh, some of these joint pieces, you know, just leaving some out entirely. I'm not sure, maybe having a clear section on the top, but this is what I've done, how I got mine to work. Not absolutely optimal, but I think it works fine and looks okay too. So there you go. Thank you for uh, thank you for your requests about this. Hope that I've shown you what I've done here. Check out what other people have done as well, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.